Give us a sense. You're over here in Europe, traveling around. You're based in Silicon Valley, but an Irish boy at heart, along with your brother who founded the company. Why Europe? Where are you beefing up? You're already in 18 countries. Uh, yeah, so we launched uh, Sweden uh, last week. Uh, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, and, uh, and Finland. Stripe is now live in all those countries, so we were out there uh, last week getting up and running. Uh, and for us, I mean, the, the Nordic market in, uh, in specific, but also the European market in general, is pretty exciting because of the, the, the new wave of tech companies coming out of there. You know, in Sweden you have Spotify and Mojang and Klarna and all these companies. And, you know, here in, uh, in the UK we're seeing some really exciting things where you have of, you know, Deliveroo taking off, you know, you, you, you have these local tech companies which are really making a dent, Nutmeg, these sorts of companies. So John, how do you decide actually what, what country comes next and what region comes next? Is it governments that approach you? Do you talk about private companies, some of the companies that you were mentioning there? I mean, if you take the temperature, is it kind of a gut feeling and saying, oh, there's something happening in that region, we need to be there? Or, or is it kind of spreadsheets and numbers? So if you look at Stripe, our focus is internet business, right? You know, Stripe is a software platform that lets you build an internet business. And so we are always looking for where we think the, the big successful internet businesses will, will be coming from. Uh, and so, you know, be, beyond Canada, the UK was our first uh, international market. And it's, it's, it's growing really quickly for us. Uh, and now we're looking at more parts of Europe. And, and you know, now we're looking out to, to Southeast Asia and Latin America and places like this. But it'll always be where we think there will be kind of large successful internet startups. I mean, give us a sense of scale here. We said you're processing billions of dollars. How much are you processing? How much in the next, by the end of the year, will you be processing? Yeah, so that's the number we release, billions of dollars, and it's across, you know, the, the, the number of merchants is, is growing fairly quickly now. It's in the tens of thousands of merchants. You know, one of the things, honestly, that's exciting for us is how much the barriers have come down to starting a business where, you know, it's uh, honestly creating a Stripe account is as easy as setting up an email account. You know, you fill out a few fields online uh, and you're up and running. And this is in contrast to how, how difficult it was previously to set up a merchant account, which was your only real option. Uh, and so one of the things that excites us is just the scale in terms of the number of businesses we can support where you know uh, we can you know thanks to the internet get people up and running pretty quickly yeah and when you look at Apple but I mean when you look at actually your business and your industry in the last couple of years the, the you know effectiveness and also how fast it's transformed is absolutely incredible can you give us a sense of for example how you know how well Apple Pay is doing because you're really at the front line to, to, to see totally. the kind of effect yeah no we think you know mobile commerce today versus five years ago they're, they're, they're completely different and we actually think you know 2015 will be the year that mobile commerce actually goes mainstream. We're seeing, uh, you know, Apple announced at WWDC that they're seeing uh, two times the conversion rate uh, thanks to Apple Pay inside of apps. Uh, and uh, that's very meaningful because you talk to any online retailer and actually, you know, letting people buy inside their app is, is one of the biggest problems they have, right? Because before it was so, so clunky. You're there kind of typing in your details <laughs> on your phone with this tiny screen. Uh, and with Apple Pay, you just press the thumbprint sensor and you're done. Uh, you know, we're also working with, with Google on, uh, on Android Pay. Uh, and so we're seeing all these kind of problems starting to get solved where before uh, mobile commerce was extremely cumbersome and now uh, it's become really easy. John, so we, I know we knew you were coming, so we were very excited. So you, we actually built our Twitter question around you. So this is what it is. Do you think that there will be cash payments still in the next 10 years? So we've had loads of answers to this. You can tweet me at Flacco, you can tweet Caroline Hyde, and you can tweet, of course, John, who's at Collision. See what he's done there? It's, it, it's pretty good. So let's see <laughs> if we get responses to that. Tell us about what banks think. You must be, are, they, are you friend, are you foe? How keen are they on this whole disruption that you're doing? Yeah, um, so, I mean, at the one level, uh, you know, a Stripe is not... Uh, a, a totally new departure from the existing system and that Stripe lets you accept credit cards and all these existing okay. payment instruments and so at some level there's a bank in there uh, somewhere we're still working kind of within and with the, uh, the banking system. Uh, but on the other hand I think there, there is a disruption going on here genuinely where uh, I was in this position myself before I was an entrepreneur and I found that working with a merchant bank provider to, to run my business online was kind of the most painful thing. Uh, and so really, you know, I think before Stripe, the, the banks had, had failed their customers in terms of actually giving them a service to, to, to easily run a business online. And I think we're seeing this in other areas too, right, where, you know, the, the fact that you can deliver financial services over the Internet has completely turned the industry on its head. You know, you have startups like TransferWise, which are, you know, taking a foreign exchange and making that much, much lower cost. You know, you, you have uh, startups doing consumer lending. You know, in the U.S., we have uh, one called uh, Lending Club, which is, again, doing kind of 
a peer-to-peer -peer lending model. Funding cycle like this, yeah. yeah. And so I think it is interesting to see that, you know, if you take uh, the internet and everyone having a mobile phone in their pocket and, you know, the fact that we can provision financial services so much more cheaply, all of those services are being provided by startups and none of them are really being provided by large banks. I think that's an interesting disruption question for the But so do you want to branch out for the moment you're focusing on payments? Why not go into financing? Why not go in, into some of the areas that you were just mentioning? You know, maybe someday we, we, we branch out, but, but there's a lot of work left to do on payments. And that, genuinely, we see this as the last Google-sized problem on the Internet. You know, we have this global communication network that makes it easy for anyone in any country to, to send information to each other. But then when you look at, you know, moving money around online, I mean, it's as if you could only send email to people within the UK, uh, you know, that, that we have these borders and these boundaries. And so, you know, we are trying to make it perfectly seamless to move money around online, and we think that, you know, payments is a really big problem. Let, let me give you a stat actually, 2% of global consumer spending happens online today. That's it. Uh, you know, the rest all happens offline. And so, you know, to your death of cash question, I think we'll get there, but we're, we're starting from a really low baseline. And this is why I was saying that 2015 as the year that mobile, co mobile commerce finally hits, all this mobile commerce we've been doing up to now, I mean, it's just the pre-testing, messing around phase. You know, we're finally only now getting into it. What percentage do you see by the end of 2015 then, if this is the coming of age? You know, by the end of this year, I don't know if we'll have made that much progress. You know, I would be long term, I think, you know, if we're 2% now, we're clearly an order of magnitude off where, you know, we will end up spending a majority of our money online. Uh, so, you know, you can argue whether it's 30 or 50 or 70%, but it's not going to be 2%. And when you, t when you say that you may look at branching out, but you have a lot to do here, mm -hmm. um, are you thinking of M&A or is it all organic growth? We're solely focused on uh, on uh, payments right now, and it's been almost entirely through organic growth. Again, you know, one of the exciting things about the internet is that you can operate these services much more efficiently, where you don't need you know a sales team down on the ground in every single you know town where you operate. You can you know make the service freely available for anyone to sign up via the internet, and then uh, that's a much more efficient way of doing it. And what about in terms of? what it's like in Silicon Valley versus, you're, you're Irish mm -hmm. to begin with, you and your brother up sticks and decided Silicon Valley was where you wanted to grow your business from. Would you make that same decision today? Is it still the VC funding, the, the support, the tech talent? With, with Stripe in particular, the reason we decided to move out really was because, you know, Stripe was uh, providing a service to tech companies, so it was so useful to be near our, uh, uh, our, our, our customers. Uh, and there's this insane critical mass of, of tech companies in Silicon Valley. I think where people start companies is very dependent on, uh, on who your target customer is. So if you're starting you know, a fintech company uh, aimed at European consumers, I think it absolutely makes sense to start it in London. If you're making a, you know, a, a, a service that targets tech companies, maybe you want to be in Silicon Valley. If you're doing media, you know, maybe New York, something like this, but I think it's very dependent on what kind of industry you're entering. Um, John, how much do you think your, your company's worth? I mean, we're hearing uh, very big figures, five billion. Yeah, so, you know, Silicon Valley and the media get caught up in all these uh, startup valuations, and I think it's a, it's a little bit unfortunate, because fundamentally it's a, a cost of capital at the end of the day, and what happens is, you know, internally, we try to be very focused on uh, uh, on you know the internal metrics that matter, you know, on revenue, on number of customers, on how happy those customers are. And as a private company, you know, we can have those metrics and keep them to ourselves. But because valuation is the only you know metric that gets out there, it ends up being this, this scorecard uh, amongst companies. Yeah, you're, that's a very smart answer. Very quickly, our Twitter question of the day. So you say that we're just at the beginning of payments, cash or no cash in ten years. Cash is not going away in 10 years' time, but I think uh, mobile commerce will be here in 10 years. John, it was great to have you on the program. Thank you so much. Oh, John Colson there, president and co-founder of Stripe.